Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanya Recording in progress Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvase Shashanyavadi Paschacha Deshatarine Vancha Kaupata Rubyasya Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <coughs> so we're reading Sri Ishopanishad and we're on Mantra 2. I will just recite the second mantra. Kurvan eveha karmani jijivishet chatam samaha. Evam tvai nanyate tosti na karma lipyate narhe. One may aspire to live for hundreds of years if he continuously goes on working in that way. For that sort of work will not bind him to the law of karma. There is no alternative to this way for man. อาจารย์บทบทที่สองจากหนังสือศรีอิชุปนิชัตนะครับคําคําแปลมันอยู่ว่าเราอาจปรารถนาจะมีชีวิตอยู่เป็นเวลาร้อยร้อยปีหากท
but there's no purpose to the life of the tree. And Prabhupada talks about other things. He said, you, you may be breathing, you may say, no, we're different, we're better than the trees because we breathe. But Prabhupada, when he quotes from Srimad Bhagavatam, that the bellows also breathe. And you may say, well, we're different from bellows because we can, we can have children, we can produce our own family and have our own family. But Prabhupada said, well, the hogs and dogs, they also can do that. And you may say, well, we, we eat, we have nice meals, we eat good food, but the camels also eat. But, you know, the camels, they eat thorns and they taste their own blood. So we're encouraged not just simply to do work for our own sense gratification, which is simply karma, but we should do work for the pleasure of the Lord, and that is actually karma yoga. Karma yoga is different from karma. And Prabhupada refers to 18th chapter of Bhagavad Gita that if you do a little work for the pleasure of the Lord, then it can save you from falling into the lower species of life. And even we cannot complete the process of bhakti yoga, we're not able to become pure devotees, but if, if we just, whatever progress we make, it will be our, for, for our benefit. In the next life we'll get a human form at least and we can continue. Mm. All right. So then Prabhupada refers also, he said, it's good if you can read the book, The Nectar of Devotion, will help you to understand more about the benefit of Bhakti Yoga. So we'll go on to mantra three. We'll read the Sanskrit. Asurya namate loka antena tamasavritaha tamste pretya bigachanti the killer of the soul, whoever he may be, must enter into the planets known as the worlds of the faithless, full of darkness and ignorance. Mantra Tisan, 
ลูกซึ่งรู้กันว่าเป็นลูกที่ไร้ความศรัทธาเต็มไปด้วยความมืดและอวิชชา So we should understand the connection here between the first three verses. The first mantra was describing how the Supreme Lord is the proprietor of everything, and then mantra two was describing what happens when you work, understanding that Krishna is the proprietor. Now mantra three describes what happens if you don't recognize Krishna as the proprietor. ทั้งสามสโลเนี่ยเนี่ยมันก็มีความเชื่อมกันอยู่นะในบทมนต์ที่หนึ่งเนี่ยคือพระองค์ทรงอธิบายบอกว่าทรงอธิบายว่าทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างเนี่ยคือมาจากพระองค์หรือว่าพระองค์เนี่ยทรงเป็นผู้ควบคุมแล้วก็เป็นเจ้าของทุกสิ่งทุกอย่างและในบทมนมันตราที่สองเนี่ยบอกว่าจะเป็นอย่างไรถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยปฏิบัติตนในการในการใช้ชีวิตโดยที่เอาพระองค์เนี่ยเป็นส่วนกลางแล้วเราเนี่ยจะใช้ชีวิตได้อย่างไรและในบทมนต์ที่สามเนี่ยก็จะอธิบายว่าในลักษณะที่เมื่อจะเกิดอะไรขึ้นถ้าเราไม่ยอมรับองค์พระกวานมาเป็นมาถ้าเราไม่ยอมรับองค์พระกวานเนี่ยมันจะเป็นยังไง Alright, so then Prabhupada's purport begins by talking about the difference between human life and animal life. That human life are are aware of their responsibilities and duties in the human body. อธิบายนะเสียพ่อพ่อเนี่ยก็เริ่มอธิบายโดยบอกถึงความแตกต่างระหว่างสิ่งมีชีวิตกับสัตว์เดรัจฉานกับพวกสัตว์ว่ามนุษย์กับสัตว์เนี่ยแตกต่างกันอย่างไรโดยอธิบายว่ามนุษย์เนี่ยจะมีหน้าที่ความรับผิดชอบที่เหนือกว่าสัตว์ So Prabhupada explains there are two kinds of people there are the suras who are godly people and there are the asuras who are Not godly. They're like demons. And there's only these two kinds of people. You're either godly or you're a demon. There's only two kinds of people. There's nothing in between. So, you may think I'm not a demon, but I'm not godly. Then you, <laughs> you, you, you may not be a big demon, but you can be a little demon. So those who are devotees, they will always try to direct their activities towards the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. We should understand it's very rare to get the human body. It only happens after a long time. So the material, but the material world is like an ocean, and the human body is like, is like a boat, which is crossing the ocean. And then the Vedic scriptures or the the teachers, the acharyas, they're like the boatman. And then the facility of the human body. The the different abilities, things which we can do with the human body, they are like the breeze which helps the boat to go across the ocean. So we should understand this example. Right, the material world is like an ocean. And the human body is like the boat. 
มหาสมุทรแล้วก็ล่างมนุษย์นี้เนี่ยเหมือนกับเรือ But you have a boat you, you need to have a good captain you need to have a good crew so that's the teachers and that's the scriptures which help us แต่เพื่อให้เรือเนี้ไปถึงฝั่งได้ก็ต้องได้รับการช่วยเหลือหรือว่าต้องมีกัปตันที่ดีแล้วก็ต้องมีเขาเรียกว่าลมก็ต้องรู้ทิศทางลม So if we don't take advantage of the human form of life, then we're like the killer of the soul. แต่ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยไม่ยอมโฉยโอกาสจากร่างจากโอกาสที่เราได้รับร่างมนุษย์นี้มาใช้ให้มันเป็นประโยชน์เนี่ยเราก็จะถือว่าเป็นผู้ฆ่าดวงนี้ The word is there in Sanskrit, atmaha. Atma is the soul, and ha means the killer. So the Although the soul can never be killed, if a person doesn't act in the proper manner according to the need of the soul, then he is considered to be a killer of the soul. บอกว่าถ้าเกิดว่าในในภาษาบอกว่าถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยใช้ร่างมนุษย์ไปไม่ไม่ได้ใช้ร่างมนุษย์ไปเพื่อการดูแจ้งแห่งตนเนี่ยเราจะเรียกว่าอัตมาหาหรือว่าผู้สังหารดวงวิญญาณนั่นเอง And if you kill the soul, then you will go into the darkest regions of ignorance. แต่แล้วหลังจากที่เราเกิดการถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยเป็นผู้สังหารดวงวิญญาณเช่นนี้เนี่ยมันก็จะทำให้เราเนี่ยต้องไปอยู่ในสถานที่ที่มืดมิดที่สุดในอวิชาแต่ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยเป็นผู้สังหารดวงวิญญาณเช่นนี้เนี่ยเราจะต้องไปอยู่ในสถานที่ที่มืดมิดที่สุดในอวิชาแต่ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยเป็นผู้สังหารดวงวิญญาณเช่นนี้เนี่ยเราจะต้องไปอยู่ในสถานที่ที่มืดมิดที่สุดในอวิชาแต่ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยเป็นผู้สังหารดวงวิญญาณเช่นนี้เนี่ยเราจะต้องไปอยู่ในสถานที่ที่มืดมิดที่สุดในอวิชาแต่ถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยเป็นผู้สังหารดวงวิญญาณเช่นนี้เนี่ยถ้าเราดูสักแล้วเนี่ยเราจะรู้เราจะเข้าใจได้ว่ามันไม่ค่อยมันไม่ได้เป็นความสุขมากนักที่จะได้ที่ต้องอยู่ในล่างสัตว์ Just like if you get a dog's body, it's not very pleasant to be in the dog's body. They suffer a lot. เหมือนกันค่ะถ้าเกิดว่าเราเห็นล่างสุนัขแล้วเนี่ยเราเห็นว่าสุนัขเนี่ยเขาไม่ได้มีความสุขอะไรมาต้องได้รับความทุกข์ทรมานนักนะ People will just give them their remnants, their scrap to eat. They eat what's left over from everyone. And there's, there's always other dogs fighting with them and biting them. And the dog has to sleep outside in the cold air in the winter time. They don't have anything to protect them from the cold. So not only the dogs have a hard life; all these different animals have a difficult life. If Doesn't matter if they're pigs or dogs or birds or fish; they're all suffering. Not just the dog, but all the animals. It doesn't matter if they're pigs, dogs, or birds. But the human body is special. We're given special facilities. We have houses to live in. And we have transportation systems, and everything is provided for the comfort of the human body. So Prabhupada questions. He said. Why, why, why are we given so many facilities which are not given to the other animals? Lao Sevawan, ก็มีคำถามว่าทำไมมนุษย์เนี่ยถึงได้รับ
ความสะดวกสบายหลายอย่างหลายประการที่สัตว์ชนิดอื่นไม่ได้รับ And Prabhupada gives the example about the government officer that somebody is working in the government office and if he may be in charge of the office. So he gets more pay, and he gets better facility. He may get a, a house from the government, and he may get a car even from the government, because he's in a big responsible position. But with the big position and with the big pay, he has a bigger responsibility. There will be people over him who will be watching him. They'll be looking to make sure he does the job properly. So if his office is inefficient, if they're not doing good work, if there's corruption there in the office, then he will get in trouble. And he may even lose his job. He may lose his position because he's not doing the job properly. So, the same way with human beings. Human beings, we have a responsibility which is not there in the animals. Our responsibility is to understand who I am and why I am here. Where we're going. สำหรับมนุษย์แล้วเนี่ยจึงเป็นหน้าที่เหมือนกันสำหรับเราที่ได้รับร่างมนุษย์มาเนี่ยมันก็เป็นหน้าที่ความรับผิดชอบของเราที
เราบทมนที่3นี้เนี่ยทำให้เราเข้าใจว่าถ้าเกิดว่าเราเนี่ยไม่ยอมใช้ร่างมนุษย์นี้ไปในการรับใช้องค์พระกวานมันก็มันหรือไม่โฉยโอกาสจากจากร่างมนุษย์นี้ให้เราพัฒนาการรู้แจ้งแห่งตนเนี่ยก็จะทําให้ชาติชาติต่อไปเนี่ยเราจะต้องไปเกิดในชาติที่ต่ำกว่า in the lower portion of the universe the lower half of the universe it's very dark and there's no light from the sun so the only light which is there comes from the jewels So it's not very pleasant to live in that kind of atmosphere. Even on this planet, there are some places on the planet, like if you live in the very northern part of the universe. Then it will, you will get six months of darkness and six months of light. And we actually see in the winter time how the, the nights become longer and the day is shorter. And if you go further north, further north, then the days become shorter and shorter until you come to the point there's no day; it's only night for six months. And then in the summertime, you have six months of daylight. You don't get any dark. You don't get any night. And so it's not very natural lifestyle. We're not meant to be living in these kind of conditions. So, Prabhupada refers to the sixth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, and he says that somebody may try to become self-realized, but they may not be successful. He tried. He's a sincere. He was sincere. He made a genuine attempt. He made a sincere attempt, but he was not able to fully perfect his relationship with Krishna. So Lord Krishna describes two situations. Somebody who's practiced yoga for a long time, and somebody's practiced for a short time. So somebody practiced for a short time, and they still have material desires. So what happens is they go to higher planets and they will take birth in higher planets where they can satisfy their material desires. But if somebody practices for a long time, but somehow still not quite perfect. Then they will take birth in a family of brahmanas or family of devotees. Uh, 
ชาติต่อไปสิ่งที่เขาจะได้รับก็คือเขาจะได้เกิดในครอบครัวที่ดีอย่างเช่นครอบครัวที่เป็นพราหมณ์ครอบครัวที่มีธรรมะธรรมโมมีวัฒนธรรม And this means that in his next life, because he's born in a devotee family, that he's got a much better chance to become a good devotee and to get perfection and go back to God. แล้วอันนั้นก็บ่งบอกว่าเขาเนี่ยจะมีโอกาสในการได้ปฏิบัติปิชนติสมนักแล้วก็มีโอกาสที่จะทำให้เขาเนี่ยได้ลุดพ้นแล้วก็ได้กลับไปหาปิชนะ So this is this is the situation for somebody who is who is not not really perfect but they get a chance to become perfect อันนี้เนี่ยเป็นตัวอย่างเนี่ยเป็นโอกาสที่เขาจะได้รับสำหรับบุคคลที่ปฏิบัติแต่ว่าปฏิบัติได้ไม่เต็มที่เนี่ยก็คือเขาจะได้รับโอกาสในการที่จะทำให้มันสำเร็จเต็มรูปแบบ But if somebody is a good devotee, if they've done good, if they're strictly followed, if they followed the principles and did their chanting, so then at the end of life they will get a great opportunity to go back to Godhead. แต่ถ้าเกิดว่าใครเนี่ยเป็นนักปฏิบัติที่ดีมีความจริงจังในการปฏิบัติอย่างอย่างจริงจังเนี่ยสุดท้ายเนี่ยเขาก็จะได้รับโอกาสในการได้กลับไปหาได้กลับบ้านได้กลับไปหาพิชนา But if somebody doesn't even try, if they don't even make an attempt to understand God, and they just only spend their life in trying to get sense gratification, then they're going to get a, a very bad result. แต่ถ้าเกิดว่าใครเนี่ยไม่ได้มีความพยายามด้วยซ้ำในการที่จะพยายามเพื่อให้ตนเองได้แบบว่าหลุดพ้นเนี่ยเขาไม่ได้มีความพยายามตรงนั้นเนี่ยเขาก็จะเขาก็จะไม่ได้ผลอะไรเขาก็จะทำให้เขาก็ทำให้ตนเองเนี่ยได้ต้องอยู่ในโลกนี้ต่อไป They have to go into the darkest region of hell แล้วมันก็จะส่งผลให้เขาเนี่ยต้องตกลงไปในโลกที่มืด So Sometimes, these, of course, these people, these are not devotees. These people are asuras, they're demons. But sometimes they make a show of religion. But when they make a show of religion, the real purpose is material gain. That they want, they they'll get the money from their followers, or they'll make they'll get some material benefit from them. สิ่งนี้เขาทำแบบนั้นเพื่ออะไรเพื่อประโยชน์ที่เขาจะได้รับก็คือเขาอาจจะมีคนที่ปฏิบัติเจริญรอยตามเขาเยอะแล้วก็อาจจะมีคนทำบุญอะไรอย่างนี้มาเนี่ยเขาก็จะได้ประโยชน์จากตรงนั้นไป So this is described in the Bhagavad Gita in the 16th chapter. 16th chapter describes the divine and the demoniac nature. So Lord Krishna describes these people. He said they're they're very good at deceiving people, at cheating people. Uh, and they get, of course, they get supported by a lot of ignorant people, people who don't really know about religion. They get, they're cheated by them, and they follow these people. So these people, they don't know anything about self-realization. And they don't know what is Ishyavasya. So, so Ishopanishad describes these people go into the darkest regions of ignorance. And so we should understand the importance of human life. 
Of course, we have to deal with the economic problems. We have to have some money. We have to earn money to live, to eat, to pay the bills. So you need some money, but that's not the only thing you're meant to do. We have to also solve the problems of birth and death, the material, that, that's a big problem. So we have to understand what is actually human life and we have to cultivate the material along with the spiritual. Krishna doesn't say you should give up the work. He doesn't say just stop everything, just sit and chant Hare Krishna. No. Krishna tells Arjuna he should work, he should fight, he should do his duty. Okay, we'll go on to mantra four. Anijat ekam manaso javio naina daivam apnuvam purvamashat tad yavatyo nyana te tistat tasmin apo matarishva tadati. Although fixed in his abode, the personality of Godhead is swifter than the mind and can overcome all others running. The powerful demigods cannot approach him. Although in one place he controls those who supply the air and rain, he surpasses all in excellence. <laughs> So from this mantra, we can understand that there's one personality above all the other persons in the universe. And the personality has his own abode, he has his own residence. And he has activities, he can run, and he can run very fast. And even the demigods cannot approach him. And this one personality is so powerful that he controls even the god of the air and the god of the rain. So Prabhupada explains in the purport how even you may be a philosopher, you may have a lot of knowledge, but you'll never understand the personality of Godhead by your own brain, by your own intelligence. We want to understand God, we have to get the mercy of God. So 
So Prabhupada quotes the, Bhag the Brahma Samhita that even if you travel very fast, even at the, faster than the mind, that still you cannot approach the Supreme Lord. And Prabhupada describes how the Supreme Lord has his own residence, his own abode, which is called Goloka. And he, although, the, although the Lord lives there, he has inconceivable powers which can reach every part of the universe. So Prabhupada gives an example. He said, just like you have a fire, so from the fire, heat and light will be spread everywhere. So the fire is in one place, but the heat and light is spread around. So in the same way, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he's in one place, but his energies are everywhere. So what energies does he have? Prabhupada explains it. There are three main energies. There's the material energy, there's the spiritual energy, and there's the marginal energy. So in the universe, there's different demigods who are in charge of the different parts of nature. Just like some demigod is in charge of the rain, and someone's in charge of the wind, and someone's in charge of the light. So these persons who are controlling all these things, they're in the marginal potency of the Supreme. Although they're quite powerful in the universe, but still they're living entities. And we're, we're human beings, we're also the marginal potency. So we're of a similar potency to these demigods who are controlling the material nature. And then the material world, that is the external potency of the Lord. And the internal potency is the spiritual world. So there's these three different energies. There's the living entities, and then there's the material world, and this, then there's the spiritual world. So, 
then Prabhupada points out we have to understand that there's a difference between the Supreme Lord and his energies. And you have to understand that the Supreme Lord always keeps his personality. He's always an individual and he doesn't give up his personality. And we cannot understand the Supreme Lord just simply by the power of our own mind. So we cannot, we can never understand the Supreme just simply by our own efforts. And Prabhupada quotes Bhagavad Gita from the 10th chapter. He says, not even the great sages can know him. Even the great suras, they cannot, it means the great devotees, they also cannot know him. So the demons, they can never know the Supreme Lord. So this fourth mantra is telling us that there's a person behind this universe, a supreme person. And the Lord is telling us about his personality in this mantra. So the different parts and parcels of the, the Lord has many different parts and parcels and they're all different symptoms of the Supreme Lord. Just like we living entities and the demigods, we're all parts and parcels. We're not equal to the whole. Krishna is the whole. We're not equal to him. We're just a tiny part of him. So we can, it, it, we will not be able to properly appreciate the Supreme Lord. We, we, if we think of the Lord as being like us, then that's a big mistake. So sometimes people are so stupid, they try to understand about the nature of the Supreme Lord just simply by their own mind and senses. But we, we should understand, even if the mind travels so fast, faster, you just like you think of the moon, one minute, the next minute you can be at the moon, the mind moves so fast, but that is not enough to understand the Supreme Lord. If we want to know about the Supreme, we have to hear from the Supreme. So that's why Krishna comes and he speaks the Bhagavad Gita. He tells us about himself. 
าสรุปถึงพระเจ้าสูงสุดเนี่ยเราก็ต้องฟังคําที่พระองค์เนี่ยทรงพูดเพราะฉะนั้นแล้วพระเจ้าทรงลงมาหรือทรงเราก็พูดนั่นแหละอย่างความรู้ในหนังสือพระบทกิตาเราพูดเกี่ยวกับพระองค์ให้เราฟัง So we want to understand the world. We want to understand who's controlling the world. They have to hear from the scriptures, like Bhagavad Gita. So everybody has got some power to act under the will of the Lord. But when we forget that we're under the Lord's control, then that means we're in Maya. So we have to understand what part Krishna wants us to do. If he wants us to do this work, do this part, play this person, we have to do it. You know, somebody's a man, and somebody's a very rich man. And somebody's a very powerful man, you know, so they play these parts. And someone else is a woman, and you know, and you play these different parts. But at the same time, we know we're not the body; we know we're souls. <laughs> So we have some free will. We we do have some free will. But we have to understand what did Krishna want us to do. So when we act according to Krishna's plan and surrender to Krishna, then we'll feel happy and we'll feel comfortable in life. And when we work in cooperation with Krishna, then we get out of Maya. We get away from the material energy. We come under the spiritual energy. So whatever the whatever power there is in the world, it's the grace of God, and we should use it for the service of God. So perfect knowledge means to understand that there's a supreme Lord behind everything. And, and this supreme Lord has inconceivable powers. And we should understand these powers work by the will of God, not by our will, but by the will of the Supreme Lord. So this is all described very clearly in the Bhagavad Gita. And Bhagavad Gita is the essence of these teachings of the Upanishads. Okay. So we will stop here and we'll ask if there's any questions.
ันจันเราก็จะจ,จบคำบรรยายไว้เพียงแค่นี้ก่อนนะคะใครมีคำถามก็ถามได้ใช่ยังมาดีเจนค่ะนี่วิชาปรมาราชดานวัตนามที่ใช้เสียงมาฮัมบูโอวิซิสอ๋อก็ได้ทุสิลาปะปุบันอ่าอาจารย์นะคะ
And then people had, they would wear clothes made of cotton and silk. They didn't use clothes which were synthetic, which were all chemicals. Everything was natural, was gifts of nature. And Krishna, when Lord Krishna appeared, Lord Krishna, he is the Supreme Lord, so he has all mystic powers. So he could do everything, he could do all kinds of things he wanted, you know. He could arrange, like he, had, he married 16,000 queens and he made a palace for each of them. He had so much wealth and so much power, nobody could equal him. ลักษณะนี้พระองค์ทรงทําเนี่ยก็เป็นสิ่งที่อัศจรรย์มากๆซึ่งไม่มีใครจะสามารถลอบเลียนแบบหรือว่าทําได้พระองค์ทรงสร
So when Lord Krishna comes to this world, he has a mission. And one of his missions was to perform his pastimes for the pleasure of his devotees. And so he appears where his devotees are so that they can perform their pastimes. And Lord, Lord Krishna also is going to kill the demons. He's going to remove the demons from the planet. So you want him to take birth in Australia, and in Australia there was nobody living there in Australia. Um, there was only th a few wild, you know, a few Aborigine people there in Australia. The natives. Most people were living in India. And then Lord Parasaram came, Lord Parasaram came, he was killing the Kshatriyas because there were so many demonic Kshatriyas. So many Kshatriya kings, they ran away and they went to Europe, they went to Greece, they went to Italy, Turkey. These people, they come from, they were the Kshatriyas who ran away from India. Okay. Understand, sir? Is that the reason why the people who uh, take birth in India, they are considered to be a special, special human being because our Lord come, came there? Well, the, we do see that the people in India generally, they're more pious that they understand about the soul and they understand about the Lord, the Supreme Lord and the holy places and the place, pastimes of the Lord and they, they, they go to temples. <laughs> So it's easier for them to take up Krishna consciousness because they're already born in that. It's so it's more natural for them. They have they have some karma from the previous life. And that's why they take birth in India, so that they have the opportunity to again continue. Okay, Guru Maharaj, I understand. Thank you for your explanation. Of course, in the past, Thailand was also a part of India, practically. Burma, Burma was a part of India. Bangladesh, they were all. It was all practically one country. India. And that's why we see, you know, in the past, like Indonesia as well, Indonesia, they have the Mahabharata, they have Ramayana, they have everything about 
from the Vedic culture and the same in Thailand. So, modern time things have changed, but the, the, in the past the tradition was that actually everybody was a, a like a, what we would call Hindu in the past, and you know in the times of Lord Krishna everybody was like a Hindu. They followed the Vedic culture. Buddhism came later. Before Buddhism, it was all Vishnu. Everybody was a devotee of Lord Vishnu and Krishna. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Sri Devi has her hand up. She has a question. Sri Devi Maharaji. Hare Krishna, Srila Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Srila Guru Maharaj, uh, I have a son who is 22 years old. He has been going through some anxiety, unable to eat, something like some mental health matter like that, and he is unable to eat his food for the past four months. Uh, he's, he has already admitted in the hospital, nothing is wrong physically with any of his organs, everything is intact and fine. So now he's seeing the psychologist, psychiatrist, and therapist and all that. So I propose to him that to to let me uh, help him uh, through spirituality uh, for him to to um, come be with me uh, do chanting with me join my reading class my Bhagavad Gita reading class uh, with other well-wishers and um, try to have a spiritual way of life uh, but he he he, he was uh, uh, not not so uh, welcoming of my suggestion he says uh, can uh, God cure me I said, you need to be patient, you need to wait, you're going through some some karmic reactions for some things that you have done, and I'm your mother, I also have to suffer alongside you. So he would like to hear from Guru Maharaj about, uh, about this matter, Guru Maharaj. How can a person who's undergoing, like him, anxiety, unable to eat, like mental block, like that, he struggles to eat his food, he's very depressed, feels like killing himself, he always talks about, like, he doesn't like to get up tomorrow morning, uh, this is how he has been uh, behaving. He's, he has lost 25 pounds. Uh, he's a tall boy, but he's like a skeleton walking in the house like that. He's got another semester of his uh, diploma to finish. I would appreciate uh, and be very grateful uh, for Guru Maharaj's uh, advice, for him to hear for himself uh, from Guru Maharaj uh, something, something that uh, can, can, can help him and give him some kind of... Uh, Realization, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah, it's difficult here. But there's, you know, many people in something like that kind of situation today in the world has become quite common around the world. People have these difficulties with the mind and you know, it's not so much physical illness but it's more mental kind of health problems. How to deal with it? Certainly, if they're willing to take to, to try the process, then Krishna consciousness can work. But they have to, they have to be willing to follow the process. That's a problem. And as you said, your son, not so willing, not very eager to do as you suggested. Of course, if he would do it, I think it would be good for him, it would help. If you could get him to read. Does he read? Sri 
Sri Devi Manaji, does he read? I'm trying. I'm trying. Uh, no, 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 he doesn't. He always used to oppose my Krishna consciousness. He said I divided the family. The family is not normal. I'm abnormal. I'm the cause of his miseries. A lot of oppositions like that. So now when, when he's put in this situation where he cannot eat, he has become a bit more calm, uh, less fighting with me, less antagonizing me like that. Uh, because he can't, physically he can't, he's very, very weak, he's unable to fight with me, I mean verbal fight. So because of that, uh, he, I, that is why uh, Guru Maharaj, I'm inviting him, I said, come into the sanctuary I have here, our beautiful uh, deities are here, every morning I do Mangala Aradi, come and join me, then I will do chanting, then I will do offering, please eat the vegetarian uh, prashadam meals, I can cook uh, special food for you, prashadam food that you can swallow like soups, vegetable soups, I can make for you. Please uh, allow me to help you. I'm begging him, appealing to him, but um, not very forthcoming. And that is why I wanted to ask this question to Guru Maharaj, so that he can hear from, from himself, from a, from a sadhu Guru Maharaj, like Guru Maharaj, you know, Guru Maharaj has gone through so much sacrifices and uh, renunciation and all that. I want him to hear, because he looks upon me as a very fallen uh, type of a person here in the house he won't um, accept when i tell him that god krishna uh, we must have faith in god krishna and uh, we must uh, go like what guru maharaj said we must be go through the process uh, be patient so like that guru maharaj so he doesn't he doesn't read but uh, i gave he asked me on like what you call krishna, what you call a gita jayanti i gave him a, a brand new bhagavad gita as a gift because he came and asked me for it so I gave him the Bhagavad Gita, but I told him that he will not be able to understand it on his own, but he needs me to, to read through with him, read with him. Mm -hmm. Did you get, did he start reading with you? Uh, no, 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 he didn't. He, he didn't, he didn't come to me uh, about that. He didn't, so this is what's... Uh, but he asked you for the Bhagavad Gita? He asked me for the Bhagavad Gita, he asked me for Lord Narasimha string, uh, occasionally he will ask for Lord Narasimha string. When one string is uh, broken, he will ask me for another string. Um, once in a blue moon, he will come in and then uh, he will come and then he will kneel down. Um, he, he needs, uh, he, he needs, he needs more tender loving care. And um, uh, I, I want to introduce him to a nice Prabhu who can be a guide like that, you know, who's very yeah, That's very important. I think that's also very, that would be a big help to him if, mm -hmm. he, if he could meet a nice Prabhu who could guide him. Mm -hmm. Who can guide him? Actually, he's, actually he, he, he's, he's, very, he's very soft and he's uh, uh, quite polite because sometimes he will ask me, have you eaten? You know, among the other children who ignores me, my youngest will just ignore me. This boy will ask, you know, Ma, he will just say like that when I'm in the kitchen. At least he acknowledge my presence, you know, when he comes to wash his hands. He will say, you know, have you eaten? At least he asked, bothers to ask, have you eaten? Mm -hmm. So this boy, as a, actually, I mean, when I look upon him, uh, besides my other daughter, Avanita, this boy has potential, actually. There's something, he needs love. He needs somebody to, like that, you know, to bring him out and uh, you know, introduce him slowly in a, in a very sweet, nice, loving way. Our Krishna consciousness without like threat like not not a threat to his current uh, lifestyle like now he cannot that's why i told him lord krishna put you in the situation last time you like to go out at night with your friends you all go car racing two three years ago he went met with a terrible accident the car somersaulted uh, he survived the two friends in front had a neck brace neck injury i said lord narasimha just plucked you out of this dangerous situation because i'm not singing lord narasimha song every morning uh, namaste narasimha i'm singing and showing the key lamp to lord narasimha somehow maybe because of that lord narasimha has uh, helped our family if not today you're dead i said you're dead because of the wreck of the car uh, the, 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 the police were surprised that the people survived that accident and your friends also were survive, survived so like this, you know, I was, I was telling him about Lord Narasimha, like that. So this boy actually has some potential, actually, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj. He has some something there, actually, because every day he's hearing, you know, the bell, the ringing of the bell, and then always walking around with my chanting bag every day, the offering is going on. Of course, he doesn't eat. He will not touch even one single prashadam that I make. I have to beg him to eat even a samosa. 
even a banana cake i have to beg him practically take a small little pinch pinch a piece of the cake and force him to take a, a prasadam like that kind of person oh mm. mm. he doesn't eat anything yeah he only eats shop food all the while shop food that's sure. why guru maharaj was thinking like god put him in this position you know sure. he cannot eat a shop food shop mm. food shop food now he's ordering shop porridge porridge from mcdonald's mm. Oh. Yeah, not good to yeah. McDonald. Yes, good. yes, good Maharaj. It's quite uh, quite hard because I wish he would not be so uh, stubborn and uh, let me help him because I told him there's nothing that uh, spirituality cannot help. I said there's, there's nothing that is beyond our Bhagavad Gita, you know. There's, there's nothing I told him repeatedly, you know. I, I told him you have to be patient. Uh-huh. And, and and accept accept it. Was accept it as the will of God. I told him also so many times I told him you know what See, about his relationship with his father uh the relationship with his father is better because they are both non vegetarians and then there's less to be opposed about the only thing that uh, the bothers the father is that he takes the car out and the petrol finished and then coming back late at night and hanging out with friends like that uh, maybe the some uh, arguments about those kind of things but otherwise uh, no more acts to grind against me because when he was a uh, young in our his uh, primary school child i had become a hare krishna devotee so he he so he said our family is abnormal when he goes to his friends houses the mothers will cook fish curry mutton curry chicken curry whereas his mother doesn't cook these things uh, he never gets to eat a uh, home cooked uh, uh, these meat foods he doesn't get chance to eat other people's mother can cook nice food like that for their sons uh, whereas i don't uh, i'm always in in this kind of a uh, uh, one uh, always embroiled in the hari krishna uh, kind of thinking he says that uh, my perspective is only hari krishna no other perspective only the hari krishna perspective like that you know so we he he had, he had a lot of uh, inbuilt uh, resentment against me he said that i'm the cause of his uh, illness in fact he told the psychologists also that is because of me that he's become like this <laughs> very funny situation difficult situation yes guru maharaj to be in yeah how to i also hope the situation i hope he will give me a chance i hope he will give us krishna consciousness a, a chance to help him because i think he he can because he's a very deep person he's a he's a very reflective person so he's he's good he's good for actually a a a, a nice study of the scriptures actually he, he, he can and unlike others but something's like blocking him to to be given a, a chance even you know he said are you trying to make me a vegetarian i said by and by and by you know as you understand more and more about our hari krishna philosophy automatically naturally it will come to you you know what what's the best thing to eat you know all lord krishna will describe everything in the bhagavad gita i told him <laughs> yeah not really not easy situation bringing up children is such a challenge isn't it Yes, Guru Maharaj. Also, they are grown because they are living in the same house. They are all in the under the same roof. They are not like a working members or like independent yet. They are still paying for their fees and their upkeep and everything. So, what one person does affects another member of the family, another family member like that, Guru Maharaj. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But I am very grateful, Sri La Guru Maharaj, that I am under Guru Maharaj's shelter. I am very very grateful. Uh, that Sri La Guru Maharaj accepted me as a disciple. I'm eternally indebted, and I pray to the dust of your lotus feet, Guru Maharaj, for your continuous love and support towards me and my family. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Yes, definitely. Uh, I'm certainly. I worry about things like this when I hear about these situations. I think, my goodness, how to resolve this situation? How to help? Very difficult situation. try to help all the family you don't want the family hating and and saying it's all because of your 
devotion to Krishna, that, that his disease is like that. <laughs> it's very harsh judgment by your son. Mm. He definitely seems to be needing some kind of uh, shelter, some kind of guidance. He, uh -huh. he needs some kind of mentor, somebody to, who he can respect and who he can work with. Uh -huh. The father doesn't help. I mean, you say the father is also non-veg. So uh, because the father will give you money to see the psychologist, the psychiatrist, the therapist. The neurologist, I said, all these therapists, psychologists, psych psychiatrists, all these people. In the long run, I told him you are going to be very poor because you'll always be having this kind of problem, and they are going to rip, rip, rip your money away. But no proper uh, solution. I, I, I told him, and I also told the father. So the father said he wants to take him to a normal Hindu temple. So I told the father, are you saying that what I'm practicing is abnormal? <laughs> are you saying that the, the temple, the normal Hindu temple is above Lord Krishna? Here we are praying the topmost worship here, Supreme Lord, personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna here in the house and given putting Krishna right in the center of, of my life here. And, and why, 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 why do you think that you need to go to a normal Deva temple and you think uh, to appease yourself that you have made that trip to the temple? Okay, good, you have made that trip to the temple, that's about it. But what is it that Lord Krishna cannot do that the, that the demigod uh, will be able to do? Uh, so this is what I, I told the father. I said, don't feed such thoughts into him. I'm trying to make him uh, slowly, uh, by and by, uh, be receptive towards uh, Krishna conscious uh, spirituality, this spiritual pathway. So don't divert his mind that, 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 that you know, you have to take him to a, temp to a normal temple because you're, you're making it appear like as if what I'm doing is abnormal in the house. <laughs> Krishna. Yeah. Yeah. Difficult. <laughs> mm. So he's studying, you say? Uh, he's finishing his diploma. He's delayed. Actually, the diploma takes three years only to complete, but he took five years because of an accident. And then he deferred a semester. He had a mental anxiety. And then uh, because of that, he delayed in his studies. And his uh, results are average, uh, average results. Like uh, not uh, he 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 retook the subjects. He failed. He retook those subjects. Now he has passed them all. So he has got one more semester to finish. March he will finish the diploma. What's that diploma? What course? Uh, it's a it's a business course. Business. Oh. Business management like that. Business. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Become something. Yeah. Yes, Guru, yes, Guru Maharaj. Mm. Well, I don't know if you can get a nice person, somebody who is somehow he can develop some relationship with your son. That is really what you really want. Hopefully your son will find somebody who he really likes and who he really wants to take shelter of. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. No, there's, it's not necessarily Krishna consciousness, not necessarily ISKCON, it may be something else. Oh. But, but, you know, something something can help, anything can help him, you know. Mm -hmm. he, okay. Because, you know, he has some, they have so much, you have, in your home, there's so much bigotry towards Krishna consciousness. So, mm -hmm. you know, you have to be a bit flexible. And, and if he can go to something else, you know, some other thing. And, Maybe he's, you know, rather than chanting, just silent meditation and something. Mm -hmm. And something like that can help him, you know. You have to be a, quite flexible and with him and okay. understand maybe he's not going to come with you, he's not going to take up Krishna consciousness. But if he can find mm -hmm. some other kind of path which can help him a little bit, you know, some kind mm -hmm. of religion, something some kind of spiritual path it could help his to get out over mm -hmm. his mental problems he must have went through a lot with the crash that must have been quite a drama for him 
Yes, yes, Guru Maharaj, it was. Before that, it wasn't so bad. Huh? Uh, before that, uh, before that, he, uh, but all through, all, all through his teenage years, he was a bit more on the rebellious side. When we go out as a family, he will sit in the house and lock himself up and say, I'm not coming with you all. Always like, uh, don't want to be part of the family, never part of the discussion, and uh, never will go on any outings. Like when I went for conferences abroad and I took the other three children along, he will refuse to be bought a ticket. He doesn't want to be part of the group. He wants to be left alone on his own. His room is in the attic. So we have the attic room, we made it into a bedroom for him. So he, he stays there in the attic. He has got a group of friends. He loves his friends. He'll go out with his friends and friends will send him back or he will take the car and go with the friends. But now all that came to a, almost like a standstill because of this uh, recent uh, incident of un being unable to eat. No oh. energy. Oh, he can't. Yeah. Go, he doesn't go out with his friends anymore. Uh, no, well, just one friend. He'll hang out with one single friend. He 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 did talk about uh, what you call um, the, that that he's meditating in his room. He did mention that to me. He's doing some meditation. Uh, but 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 I did tell him that uh, uh, maybe I shouldn't have. But I told him that you have to have an, an object of meditation. I mean, I'm meditating onto a something. Uh, it can't be an, a, a meditation onto a nothingness like that, you know. So there has to be something you're meditating on, you know. So mm -hmm. I told him, like Lord Shiva, meditating on the Supreme Lord, like that, you know, on meditation like that. So I think he's attracted to, like what Guru Maharaj mentioned just now, the, the, the peaceful, a bit the quiet type of meditation like that. I think he's interested in that kind. Yeah, so let him go for that, you know, encourage him. Try to get his health together. Okay. You know, you have to, you have to be flexible. I think that's important. Okay, good Maharaj. I will be. Yes, I'll try to be. Okay. There's another question here. Thank Are, you so much, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Yuvati Sachi Mataji has a question. Yes, uh, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, the question is, uh, when we build uh, our relationship uh, with uh, Krishna, in the very beginning, we can uh, take as an example our material relationships. Uh, is it normal, Guru Maharaj? A material relationship? Yes. And as an example, in the very beginning of our devotional service, um, maybe. What do you think? You mean you think of Krishna as your boyfriend or as your child or as your. Yes, yes, uh, something like this. Because uh, we have no other examples. Uh, even we can un understand uh, that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. But as an example, we can uh, take uh, our material relationships. Mm -hmm. Is it normal or not? Well, it's not a material relationship. <laughs> if you have a relationship with Krishna, yeah, it's, it's good. You know, you think of Krishna like that. So you're cultivating some Krishna consciousness. And gradually, that you can come to a higher level, understanding that it's not material. Ah, uh, okay. But some people do, do do this, they do have that kind of attitude towards Krishna. And it can be, they can become quite devoted. That they think of Krishna as their child, and they have no child, and so they take Krishna for their child, and they worship, and they think of Krishna as their son, and do many things for Krishna, and so it, it may appear to be material, but because it's for Krishna, it's not material actually, it's spiritual. Oh, yes, I've understood. So we don't discourage it, people have that kind of relationship with Krishna, it's all right, go ahead, good. The main thing is to follow the principles, we have a process, you have to chant Krishna's name, and they should read the books about Krishna, they should understand the knowledge.
cultivate the philosophy, understand the philosophy. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Okay, so thank you. Okay, Hare Krishna. So thank all the devotees for their questions. Thank Archana for her translation. And we ask everyone, please take care, keep your health, stay healthy. And we hope to see you all on Monday, Monday night. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Jai.